thought it was such a nice day that uh, we take it outside. How about that? Right, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. Uh, as most of you know, the latest numbers from Louisiana Department of Health uh, on COVID-19 stand at 171 with four reported deaths now. Uh, we have no updated results as of this time from Lafayette Parish or the rest of Acadiana. So again, we're still waiting. Good news is the Cajun Dome screening facility will open at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and it will go on until 3 p.m. Uh, we're gonna talk about a little bit about what that criteria is for folks who are warning if they should or should not go. Uh, we've got a good bit of information on that for you. But one thing to note is people will need to bring a pictured ID, their insurance card, and if they have no insurance, they need to be prepared to make a $50 payment. Uh, if folks have questions about whether or not they should go beginning either later this afternoon or early tomorrow morning, they can dial 311 and press 1 to speak with a medical professional who can assess them and tell them whether or not to head to the Cajun Dome to get screened. Patients with symptoms of acute viral respiratory illness that includes coughing or shortness of breath and or a temperature of greater than 100.4 degrees. Patients that have symptoms and are pregnant or considered high risk will first be tested for the flu. If they are flu negative, that specimen will be sent in for COVID-19 testing. Who is high risk? Healthcare workers with direct contact with confirmed suspected COVID cases. Again, that is healthcare workers who have had direct contact with confirmed suspected COVID cases. Pregnant women are considered high risk. Patients with immuno, Im, immunocompromised conditions, such as receiving immunosuppressive medications, solid organ transplants, hemodialysis, chronic lung disease, active cancer, HIV, and diabetes. Those 60 years of age and older, people living in communal settings like nursing facilities or shelters, infants less than or 10 weeks of age or their adjusted gestational age. Now again, if you have questions about whether or not you should be screened, please do not show up if you're just curious as to whether or not you have COVID-19. If you are not feeling sick, and you're not showing symptoms, you will put added stress on the system and you will not be tested. So please stay home. We've set up that call center again, staffed with medical professionals that will be operating 24 hours per day. Once it goes live and we will let you know the second it does, all you have to do is dial 311. That is the same number you dial for LCG services. It'll prompt you to dial one if you want information or need to speak to a medical professional, a professional about COVID-19 testing. You will press one, then you will be directed and you will speak directly with a medical professional. You will still use 311 for all other LCG services. Just follow the prompts. Uh, again, I wanna emphasize we have 211 as well. That's a compliment to 311. Uh, 311 is going to be for that medical screening and LCG public services, but 211 is a statewide network to answer general questions about the virus. Or you can head to www.la211help.org. Again, we want to address rumors. There are still rumors going around. There is still a lot of talk going around, especially given some of the restrictions that were placed yesterday. Again, Please don't give in to rumors. Please don't start rumors. Uh, and, and please don't help to spread these rumors. It does nothing but harm this process that we're trying to accomplish. Again, dispel rumors. At this point, we have no other closures specifically to tell you about. When we do, we will let you know. If you heard it online and not from us, it's probably a rumor. Uh, again, a lot of the restrictions that were put in place are being enforced. So if you see a health club that might be open or a restaurant that is allowing patrons to sit down and have a meal, again, we need you to let law enforcement know because there's a reason we've done this. We need to protect citizens. And uh, we are in need of healthcare volunteers to assist with our screening center. So we will be setting up a process for healthcare volunteers to notify us if they're interested 
that information will be coming as soon as it's available. And with that, I'd like to um, bring forward uh, Mayor President Guillory and then uh, Dr. Stefanski, if you have an update for us as well. Okay. Uh, Mayor President. All right. Thank you. So which one of you brought this beautiful weather? I think, is it, was that, is that KDN? No? Okay, well, all right. how, how appropriate. So again, thank you for coming out. Yesterday and today, President Trump and Vice President Pence emphasized the things all Americans can do over the next 15 days to help slow the spread of this virus. Listen and follow the directions of your state and local authorities. If you feel sick, do not go to work. Contact your medical provider. If your children are sick, again, please contact your medical provider. If someone in your household has tested positive for the coronavirus, keep the entire home at keep the entire household at home and again contact your medical provider. If you're an older person, stay home and again stay away from other people. If you are a person with a serious underlying health condition that can put you at an increased risk, for example, a condition that weakens your lung or heart function or even immune system, stay home and stay, stay away from other people. The president has emphasized what we can do over the next 15 days. The governor has also announced measures through April 13th. Locally, We've announced measures in these same relatively short time frames. We all want this public health emergency to be over as soon as possible. As a result, we are taking steps in manageable time frames, two weeks to a month where possible. At the same time, we are prepared to fight this battle as long as necessary to be successful. We are working to protect our healthcare system from overload that could result in contagion hotspots and, and a spike in mortality rates, as has been seen in other places. The emergency declarations we are working under are no different from what we do in response to natural disasters like hurricanes, flooding, and tornadoes. We take steps such as curfews and limiting activity to protect first responders so that they can do their work. We take these steps to protect lives and property. So, just think of this as a different kind of natural disaster. This is one where we're not quite sure yet just how long it will last. In any case, we still need to protect first responders, and in this case, our frontline healthcare personnel. We are especially working to protect those who are at greatest risk, the elderly, the disabled, and those with underlying chronic health conditions. But I want to echo the President's comments from yesterday and today. This is a call for all Americans to come together and do our part in this public health emergency. If we all act responsibly and follow the guidelines from our health professionals, we can get through this as soon as possible. That said, I have about five or ten minutes where I can answer some questions. Uh, then we have to go prepare with my CAO for some upcoming council meetings. Any questions of me? Yes, ma'am. For the testing site, uh, how many tests do you have So it's a screening site. So we're going to, yeah, and our health care providers have made that very clear. And, and on that note, uh, Jamie had mentioned 311. It, sh it will go live as early as tonight but as also as, uh, as late as tomorrow morning. 311 is available, but, but for the COVID-19 threat, um, there's, there's going to be a special component to that where you dial in, and we partner with the Schumacher Group so that healthcare providers are answering those calls. So it's not, an LC, it's not a regular LCG employee. So that's, if, I'm placing an emphasis on that because that's one area where our public can, can go through an on-the-phone um, on screening uh, test. So go, go to the Cajun Dome tomorrow, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., but try 311 first. Dial 311, you can go through the screening process, or you can go to the Cajun Dome. A little bit on that $50 copay for yeah. people that don't have the insurance. I'm going to defer to our health care providers. That's, that's the guidance we got a few hours ago. So come show up tomorrow, bring an ID, bring your health insurance. Um, and it's my understanding you need to be prepared to, to write $50 too. I don't know if there's any exceptions. We'll have to experience that tomorrow. But it, as, as I would push for those exceptions if we can. Will there yes, be sir. opportunity for them to get reimbursed? I don't know. Yes, sir. I know
it's my understanding that once you go through the entire assembly lines, what I reference is as, you, you go to a starting point and we'll have our police officers and our uh, director of traffic roads and bridges out there to, to, to guide each of, the, each of the cars through each of the uh, stations, that eventually once you weed out the flu, strep, and all these other uh, potential conditions that there would be testing available. Any information on how many tests that have been done here in Lafayette Parish or Acadiana that have been negative so far? Uh, Dr. Stefanski can probably add to that. Um, I don't know the exact number, but I, I do know that we have several, several tests that are pending um, that, that we're waiting for results either today or tomorrow. Okay, yesterday you all were saying about 100 yeah. uh, tests have been done. Is that still around the same ballpark number or is it greater? I'll defer to Dr. Stefanski. Any other questions of me? Uh, I know that you're asking for health care workers needed. Yes. Um, how many uh, people are you capable to serve tomorrow that we know right now? Yeah, great question, and I, I'm glad you brought that up. So if we have any health care providers out there that are listening in or, or, or tuning in, um, we're going to put out some information, a point of contact, and we have Craig Stansberry with Lafayette OSEP behind us okay good uh, that, that may be able to give a little guidance on that as well um, but this you know you want to see the best in our community come to the Cajun Dome tomorrow we have representatives from Lords Our Lady of Lords we have representative from Lafayette General Medical Center we have um, both of our, our, our emergency room um, doctors that are that lead uh, both Dr. Cornish and Dr. Claymore from uh, Lafayette General and Our Lady of Lords respectively uh, come doing a joint task force a joint mission we have representatives from Acadian Ambulance um, so we have the health care providers that we need to, to perform this mission successfully uh, but but we you know those limits those resources can be limiting and we have a great great resource within our community of our health care providers so whether you're a, a nurse a nursing assistant to a medical doctor health care provider uh, we will provide the point of contact for you to reach out to and volunteer, and we're urging our health care providers to step forward and let's let's combat this uh, this 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 very contagious illness together. Can you walk us through what tomorrow will sort of look like for those that are going to the Cajun Dome? Sure. So start off at 9 a.m. We'll direct traffic, and you go through each station. Yes, ma'am. Yes, 311 is, but our, our, our COVID-19 component may not be, and we'll follow up with some information on that. Um, Jamie, do you know that answer, where they enter into at the Cajun Dome? So, Chief Morgan, through through Souvenir Gate? Reinhardt, so the Reinhardt and Souvenir, Souvenir Gate area of the Cajun Dome, and it should be very clear to see where you can enter and where you can't enter. So, good, good question, Claire. Any were other questions any, of me? Were there any issues last night uh, with anyone closing down? Not that I know of. Uh, have y'all made any decisions about the Bruce Ard location? Good, good question. So, we we will have the Bruce Ard location uh, available with everything other than the personnel. Um, that, that would be needed to, to man that station. It's going to be there just in case when we get there tomorrow, 9 to 3, that we need to flex over to Bruce Hart, it'll be available. And again, all of our local mayors, you know, we're, we're staying in constant communication. A lot of teamwork here in the parish. I'm very proud of the leadership within our municipalities and our parish, our first responders. So in Bruce Hart, for example, Mayor Bork uh, is going way out of his way to, to make sure that this is a successful parish-wide initiative. And, and our other area mayors as well. Yes, sir. There's a limitation in Bruce Hart, um, volunteer base. Is it, is the limitation of Bruce Hart opening volunteer base? Uh, no. Okay. And uh, I know that there was a site survey in the Cajun Dome. Can you tell me sort of what y'all were looking for there and if there was one of the Bruce Hart locations as well? So there was a site survey in both locations, as will the other three locations should we need to flex to those those locations as well. Um, and it was just a walkthrough, you know, quad walk run, proper preparation prevents uh, poor performance. So that's that's what we wanted to do and go through with all of our health care providers. We had representatives from our Lady of Lords, from Lafayette General, from Acadian Ambulance, other first responders, uh, our leadership team within the parish, and we did a very successful uh, walkthrough. Also have several members of our council, both councils in the audience today. Uh, they've been invaluable to this process working hard, uh, keeping keeping the administration informed um, on concerns throughout their districts. So I really appreciate the teamwork there. I appreciate the leadership that, that you're seeing from your local leaders at all levels. One more question for the Mayor President. Yes, ma'am. It starts tomorrow, but we, we intend we're gonna we're gonna operate this until until we no longer need to operate it. But it will start tomorrow and we're gonna learn a we're gonna learn a lot of information tomorrow and see see what kind of changes we need to 
we need to change to. But look, I appreciate your time. Jamie and, and the rest of the group is going to stay up here. I need to step out to prepare for the council meetings, and I appreciate all of your time. May God bless you. I can answer those questions for you, Chris. First, real quick, before I forget, I do have a phone number for uh, medical professionals who want to volunteer. Okay, so if you're ready to copy, that number is 291 5060. 291 5060. They can call that number, they will be vetted, uh, they will get their information, and they will ultimately be vetted by um, officials. So, okay, sorry, Chris, what was your question? Just to be clear, are you all limiting how many We are going to do as many as we can uh, as, as, if equipment permits, okay? Uh, it's not that we're trying to limit, it's just that this is the pilot and uh, we're going to see how that one goes and kind of develop further from there. And how many people are you all prepared to handle some more education? I guess we'll have to see how many show up, all right? Um, okay. Okay. Scratch that original number. For healthcare professionals okay. throughout Acadiana. 262 5311. Say that again. 262 5311. All right. Also, real quick, I want to address I know some of you are already sent out push alerts concerning the site for tomorrow. If you could please not use the word testing, this is a screening site. Okay, not a testing site, a screening site. That, that needs to be made very clear. And for those view, viewing at home, explain the difference. All right. So screening is us trying to identify that population that would ultimately need testing. All right. And then the severity of those folks, you know, based on whether or not we're able to give them a test at that time. All right. And again, we're working with what we have. Go ahead. We have a We will play that day by day. We'll see how tomorrow goes and what the need is beyond that. 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. And at what point are you all expecting some of these results to come back? I know you were saying Tuesday, Wednesday. Chris, we were hoping they came back, you know, last week. But again, we're at the mercy of those independent labs and when they're able to process them. And understand, too, we're going up against the rest of the United States who are also sending in these mass amounts of tests. And there are hundreds of thousands of people, I'm sure, at this point that are trying to get tested. Are there any qualifying uh, qualifiers for these volunteers that you're asking for? Do you have Legitimate medical professionals. And they will be screened by uh, Dr. Spancy's office to ensure that they have those qualifications required. If, I personally don't know all of the qualifications, but yeah. uh, do you want to stand? Sure. So we actually have a volunteer database um, for healthcare professionals, Louisiana Volunteers in Action. So um, nurses, physicians, social workers, healthcare professionals who are interested in serving their community. And we can, uh, we'll, again, as uh, Jamie said, we credential, verify licenses, and add them to our database. So we have a call out list should we need them. And if you're being more close to this, can you sort of address it? Who might be listening about the needs that we have right now for volunteers? Sure. So um, as we watch these uh, these crises essentially evolve, uh, unfold around the country um, and around the world, you know, it's very difficult to predict at this moment what our need will be. Um, so what we need to do now is, you know, one is develop this cache of volunteers who are ready and able and willing to serve our community should the, should the need be there. Um, at this moment, it might be for these screening and testing sites. It might be staffing these call centers. And then again, we're not sure what to expect. We're watching the rest of the world um, and determining what those needs are, as, as, again, as the situation unfolds. But right now, I would say these screening call centers, um, that would be the immediate need for volunteers. Dr. Stefanski, any advice for those people that might not be able to afford the $50 that they get on What should they do? So, you know, that, that's a very difficult question. and I. I this is something that we'll have to work out with the teams that are there on site tomorrow and, and determine what their, um, you know, how, what their eligibility um, criteria are. So, yeah, that's something I'm not responsible for that, for that side of things, so it's very hard for me to answer that question. So, and, and I'll clarify on that. The two main partners we have, Lafayette General Hospital 
and uh, Our Lady of Lords. Uh, they, they are not, you know, they are private organizations. They are hospitals. LCG is not responsible for saying, hey, you have to pay this. Unfortunately, the medical system is uh, beyond our control. Uh, I'm sure if it were up to us, we would uh, gladly give these uh, tests for free, but um, it, it's that industry. I'm, I, I'm not in. I'm not going to say who's responsible for it, other than the LCG is not. I saw that our uh, council members. Left. Yes, they are also getting ready for the council meeting. And I know that there's that five hundred thousand dollars that's being moved to COVID nineteen expenses. Um, it's a. It's proposed. Yeah, proposed. Would it be possible that any of that money could go towards some of these people uh, looking for that? Neil, if you ask me to even try to describe how funds work at this point when it comes to things like that, we'll have to, I'll have to get back to you on that one. Any other questions? It, that number changes as every minute goes by and uh, it comes from many different sources. So uh, Claire, I will try to get a good number for you, hopefully by tomorrow. Um, because I'm sure a lot of us are, are curious. 